For people who want to know what is the Keith Angie Network, the whole point of my talk show is to show you that even with having a word of disability, I can style them out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of word and disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be to prove them. Stem out to something. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the one and only Keith Angie Network. It is episode 952. That is right. But who would have thought? 952. I'm here with two great upcoming professional actor and professional guitarists. I'm here on the Keep Engine Network. You got to hear from them when we take the commercial break. Hi, I'm Jill C. Lewis, and I was just interviewed by Keith Andrew. Um, it was a pleasure to be on the show. I love the energy. I love the cause. You should follow him and subscribe. Hi, this is Michael Wilson, and you're watching and listening to Keith Andrew. Check it out. Now we're back from the commercial break. First question I want to ask is Michael, tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Uh, let's see. I started playing when I was eight years old uh, with formal lessons and continued on with a lot of that for many years uh, through college. And... Um, and I started playing professionally as a teenager. I was playing clubs before I was even out of high school. And, uh, you know, like a lot of um, artistic career choices that I'm sure uh, Ms. Lewis can attest to, it goes like this. There's a lot of ups and downs, uh, peaks and valleys. And so I've had a lot of interesting sort of career changes. Um, for the past several years, I've been playing in various Broadway shows. I never aspired to that. I did not grow up with that. Um, but there I am and, uh, I'm enjoying it. And, and, uh, you know, I do a lot of different stuff as a, you know, as a musician, there are no days off. Any day off is a day you're not getting paid. So it's a constant hustle. It's constant spinning of plates to, um, keep working. And so that's that's what I'm doing. It's constant, constant hustle. <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, Jill. Uh, what about you? Okay, I'm full of uh, what they say—a uh, woman of many hats. <laughs> so um, I am originally just a singer, then turned to songwriter, to actress, to um, speaker, um, to just. Wealth builder, kingdom builder, mother of six, grandmother, um, helping direct now in certain movies as assistant, um, as an assistant and in casting and um, just so many things <laughs> that, um, that I guess just came to me. Um, so originally it just started with a voice and uh, now it's progressed to a lot of things. No, absolutely. And I like bringing people together both of you, you mentioned you're a singer and you're a guitarist. Hey, maybe you guys who do collaborate or something. Never know. That's how it's, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. people you meet along the way. And hey, this person's really good. I could use that person with X, Y, Z. Right. So the next question I want to ask you is, um, no, I have my list of acting questions. But for you, Michael, we're going to change the acting to music. So it's the same question, only you're changing one part. So the first question is for both of you. What is the biggest change you wanted to make in your career? And Joe, we're going to start with you. The biggest change? Oh, the biggest change. Um, I would, I guess I would have to say surrendering completely to the purpose, uh, you know, that is obviously within um, that drive, I was definitely lacking. Um, I, I, I can't blame anything for it. Um, I think everything is in its due time and it, it is a perfect season right now for it. And I accept that. Um, but I wish I was a little bit more aware of that, you know, to pursue your purpose and to pursue your passion. A lot right. earlier on. What about you, Michael? Uh, yeah, very similar to that. Um, 
I think it's, it can be very difficult when you have any sort of career in the arts or any sort of artistic leaning um, to follow that and not to be, it's very easy to be discouraged. Um, modern society, particularly American Western culture, you know, it's not a real job to be right. a, an actor, a singer, a musician, a fine artist, a visual artist um, of almost any kind. And, um, you know, I still have people, I run into people that I grew up with and they go, do you have like a real job? I'm like, like yes, I have a real job. I play the guitar and they kind of, they don't, they kind of scratch their heads and don't understand it. And it's really hard because you spend a lot of time questioning whether or not you're going the right way because most people are trying to pull you out of that path. And so following that, what you firmly believe, if you firmly believe that this is your path, it can be very difficult to follow. The older I get, uh, you know, I, I'm able to shut all that sort of negativity out. Um, not necessarily neg negativity, but lack of positivity, let's just say. And so it's really, the older I get, the, the, the more focused I am in following that path. No, I agree with you 100%. You know, that's the same way how I feel about my talk show. You know, people are like, you know, you're not educated, you're not qualified, you didn't go to college, you know, you can't read, you read and learn at a fifth grade high school level, you're on the spectrum of being retarded, uh, you get yourself into something that you really don't have an idea what you're getting yourself into. But this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is what I want to do until I die. So even if it takes day by day, even if I have to take little baby steps or whatever the hell you want to say, I will show you, hey, yes, I am not educated. But look at what I was able to accomplish for nine and a half years. Thanks to you guys, this 952 episodes. I didn't go to college, you know, yes, I may not be qualified to do what, what you guys do, but the point of the show is to show you that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be to prove them against the mouths or something. Amen to that. <laughs> and and who, who gets to decide what the qualifications for any job are? You do. If this is what you want. You go, like, young people ask me all the time, how did you get, how did you make a career out of this? How did you get to do X or whatever that is? And I, the analogy I always tell younger people, anybody really, is what did you want to do when you were a little kid? Did you want to play shortstop for the New York Yankees? Somebody has to play New, somebody has to play shortstop for the New York Yankees. Why not you? Somebody has to do it. And that's a perfect another example dovetailing in, in what you just said qualifications if you hit and throw and catch a ball really really well those are the qualifications you don't go to school for that it, it doesn't require an education so you know it, it almost doesn't matter college some of the smartest people i know don't have a formal education conversely some of the least intelligent people i know have master's degrees so yeah, you know, it's funny to mention that, you know, no, absolutely. It's funny to mention that people say, you know, I'm trying to find the words, but I'm not educated. But you have people who have bachelors and BAs, but they can't drive a car if their life depended on it. Right. One thing I, I also would like to add to that is that I have found that truly living within your purpose, what uniquely makes you that only you can do, right? It's like, to me, squashes uh, depression because I know when myself has been in that position where I'm doing other things, but I'm not living within what I, I know is my calling to do, you know, what, what is only uniquely mine. And therefore, I do not um, find joy. I can have happiness because happiness is conditional, but that inner joy comes from who you are. And until you land on that, you know, you don't get to really... Uh, experience that kind of joy, you know? So I truly believe that, yeah, no one can tell you what you qualify for or not. If it's yours and it's, and it's uniquely yours, and I believe that 100%, then 
once you hit that target, once you step on it and you know it and are confident about that, wow, just wow. You can truly live life. Doesn't matter ups, downs, but you have that inner joy that keeps you going through and through and allows you to go step by step, no matter if it's not going at the speed that you want it to. You're still happy and content because you're living in your purpose. So. Uh no, I agree. Now, the next question I want to ask you is for both of you. So I'm going to throw these questions out so you guys can take turns answering it. Have you, besides me, obviously, have you worked with people with disabilities? And are you willing to work and mentor people with disabilities? And Jill, I'm going to ask you. Absolutely. I think that, um, like I said, each and every person is unique. Each one is here to fulfill something that nobody else can. And those things are not limitations. I'm sorry. I don't think they are. You know, I have out of my six children, um, he's the different, I have one that's the different one of all, right? And uh, nobody else understands him. <laughs> and and I, I probably don't understand him, but I try. You know, he's ADHD. He has other uh, conditions that in everybody else's eyes is difficult. And he feels alone and he feels suppressed and he feels like he doesn't fit in. He's not good enough. He feels like he's a burden at times, you know? And the truth is that it, he's, he's just simply different. That doesn't change his worth. He's still powerful within his own self, you know? And I can't wait till he finds that. Um, and again, he feels like they don't want to play with me. So it's like asking, are you willing to work with this person? You know, so he's living like, well, they don't want to play with me, you know, um, because I'm different because I, and, but it, the beauty is within and I hope to encourage him uh, enough so that he does not fall into a hole where he feels that, you know, he's not valuable because he is is um so yes absolutely i have one in my home and i would take 10 of them if i could <laughs> you know so uh it's a very good point and um i didn't know this this wasn't a thing when i was a kid but i uh know now that i'm also severely adhd and it was di very difficult growing up like that um uh, but at the same time as an adult I realized how well it's informed my art. It's made me a better artist at the end of the day, because you're you're just for a lot of reasons. It's fantastic. It, it's 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 a blessing and a curse, and you you got to look at it that way. It can be there are times that it's very difficult, but there are times when I thank whoever's up there that because I truly believe it's made me a better musician. It's made me better able to um, access whatever emotions I need to, 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 to get, to get the music out there. And I do quite frequently. It's having that direct access almost at will that I think if you were a normal person, you may have a little more difficulty accessing that as easily. Um, but besides that, I don't recall if I've ever worked with anybody that has a, any kind of uh, disability. But I certainly would because if, hey, if you're good and you could do the gig, you work with that person. That's it. You know, you, that's the gating factor. Are you good enough to be there? If you're good enough to be there, you, you get the gig. That's it. No, I agree with you 100 percent, you know. One thing I'm bad at is if someone has an easy name, I do a different introduction. If I, I'm really horrible and I have a habit of bolstering names. That's why when I did a commercial break, you guys would introduce yourselves. Now I know realistically for the talk show, you would have to, you know, do it yourself. And I have it on text to speech. But I try to make my show different. I'm not trying to be a copy and paste. I'm not trying to be like Bill O'Reilly, Bill Maher, CNN, Fox News. I try to show you, hey, he has a disability, but he can be just more entertaining and put a different spin on it, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. So the question I want to ask uh, you, Michael, is you are in the art industry have you ever performed in front of 
a massive group of people, and I see you're going for the ZZ Top look. So, <laughs> what was the question? Have I ever performed in in, in a massive of uh, crowd of people? Like, did you ever uh, perform at a beach? Did you want to perform at Madison Square Garden, Westbury? Uh, uh, I so one of my jobs is. Um, I work for a company at a NIAC called Left Field Productions, and they have five or six different touring shows that tour all over the country and outside of the country. And um, I'm the guitarist and musical associate musical director for one of them called 50 Years of Rock and Roll. And we play large theaters all over the country. So regularly, five, 6,000 people. Um, I, I don't know what the biggest audience I've ever played to, but probably somewhere in that neighborhood. Actually, yeah, probably somewhere in the in the five or six thousand neighborhood, and that's on a on a regular basis. But what is your what is your dream, Matt? Do you want to sell out Madison Square Garden? Do you want to have a show in what, Long Island, New York, New Jersey? Uh, you know, your dream changes over time. I know mine did. You know, when I was a kid, it was I wanted to play Madison Square, Madison Square Garden. And uh, I probably never will at this point. And that's OK, because, you know, what you want as, as, a, as an artistic person, at least for me, it has changed many times over the years. And there are other factors for me now. You know, I have a, I have a family, I have children. And so certain uh, ways of measuring success would not be something that I'd be interested in now. Like, I don't think I'd want to go on tour for a year straight. Cause I think about what I would miss from my kids. I'd miss birthdays. I'd miss holidays. And so that to me is, you know, you, you tend to, again, you change what is success. What, what is your definition of success? And when in my twenties, I would, you could put me on the road for two years. I'd be perfectly happy. But nowadays I don't think I could do that. So it 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 changes. Well, we, well I just we, want to. I just want to work. I just want to, you know, work and continue, sort of very slowly climbing that ladder. And that's you know, that's success to me. Well, I have to ask you this question. You know, the whole lifestyle of you know, party like a rock star, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You know, obviously you are married and you have a family. But when you first started your career, was that the mindset you had? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but I was single at the time. You know, I was a kid. I was single, of course. But, you know, I am, I am neither single nor a kid. So, you know, I value sleep more than anything else when I'm on tour. <laughs> no, I agree. No drugs. <laughs> no, no girls. None of that. <laughs> you know, for me, I only drink on special occasions. I'm not an alcoholic or anything, but <laughs> but that's a little two cents about me. Well, what about you, Joe? You know, as you started your acting career, did you want to be in a A list movie with uh, Will Smith or Robert Downey Jr.? Have you ever been on TV? Um. So. The acting is very new. That is actually this year where I'm working on like the sixth project. Um, so that was never a thought. Um, I was always a singer and um, I, I didn't, I didn't really pursue it though. You know what I mean? Like I can't say that I pursued it. Now I've been singing for over 20 years. Um, I've been very busy with that and I've enjoyed every minute of it as well. Um, Large, largest crowd, I would say, would be uh, the uh, Amway Arena of uh, Orlando for the Magics. Um, I don't know how many people were there, but it was the Magics. So it was the Amway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I've been singing for very, very long. And um, I just simply enjoyed that part of it. And then now it introduced to the uh, JC Films is where I'm working with now. Um, again, everything just kind of came to me. So I, I haven't had a chance to think that far yet. You know, I'm just excited that both skills are combined now um, and new skills I'm learning that I had never imagined I had. So, Well, 
it's this is a perfect subject for both of you, and I'm gonna pass it over to you guys, and you guys can interact with each other. You know, both of you are in the art business. So, Joe, the first question I want to ask you is, what do you more cater to? Do you do rock and roll? Do you sing rock and roll? Do you play jazz? And, uh, Michael, it's the same question for you as you are, are a guitarist. But, Joe, I'm going to hear from you first. So, my genre has always been um, just faith-based Christian music. Uh, so, a gospel singer. Um, but my influences are your Billie Holiday and, you know, all my R&B sounds. And that has been the root of, of the history of my singing inspiration, your Mariah Carey, your Whitney Houston, you know. So um, those that was my kind of style and that's what I kind of bring into it. So it's not um, it's not your typical praise and worship. <laughs> <laughs> You're now in a church. No, it's it's very. Uh, there's a lot of passion. Not, not that it, that doesn't have passion in it, but I mean, it's it's more of that soulful feeling. Um, but I have musicians in my family. Um, my father is a rock and roller, you know, and, and he does. He played anything and everything there is under the sun. Um, so that just happened to be where I have fallen in, where I I feel whole. I really enjoy it. What about you, Michael? Um, well, when I first started, I was quite young. I was, I had just turned eight and, um, I was a rock kid. I have older siblings who were musicians. And so, uh, they, they, there was constantly rock playing rock music around the house. And that's what I wanted to do. Um, eventually, you know, when I got to high school, there were, you know, I wanted to be a better guitarist. I wanted to be a better musician. And, um, I started taking classical guitar lessons in high school because that was sort of a thing where I felt it was a tool to make me a better musician. And of course, once you get to college and if you go to music school, you're learning a lot of different styles. You're learning jazz, you're learning classical, you're learning all sorts of stuff. And although I, I, I'm, I consider myself a rock musician, um, I've done a lot of things over, over my career. Um, I, I always wanted to work and I always wanted to do things that uh, I haven't really done before. So, and I say, yes, I, well, I don't anymore, but I used to say yes to everything. Hey, do you know how to play uh, such and such and such type of music? Yes. Okay, good. We're going to hire you for this. <laughs> and you know, you you figure it out. You fit, you learn it quick, you figure it out and you know, you, you, and so I've spent a lot of my early career going, yep, I can play that and working it out. I, you know, I play, you know, sixties, Memphis soul, R and B, uh, disco, every kind of rock you can imagine, blues, jazz, musical theater. Um, and so it all, it just makes you a better musician overall the, the more different styles you learn the more varied you become wow. the more you're going to work and so and that was a key thing too uh because if you can do more a more varied group of people will be able to hire you and um if you want to work that's Absolutely. that's important that's that's key mm -hmm. and so um i consider myself fairly well-rounded but i'm a rock guy that's what i like that's what i listen to <laughs> <laughs> when I have time to listen to anything. And so now I'm going to pass it up to you guys. You guys can ask each other two questions. We have six minutes and counting. But I do want to throw in it real quick. Have you ever, guys, have you both of you ever BS'd to get something that you really wanted? For me, I say yes. Uh, oh, he's got me. He's got me thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if I answer while you're thinking, Jill? Yeah, go okay. ahead. So when I was younger, like a late, you know, college age, late teens, early 20s, uh, some of the best gigs I ever got were the type of thing where I would corner somebody that I knew was a bigger deal than I was. And I'm a fair, Keith, you've seen me in person. I'm a physically, I'm a big guy, right? And so... I'm a little physically imposing and uh, 
I occasionally will use that to my advantage in certain situations. So I occasionally would corner people and say, listen, I, you know, you're great, but you need a better guitar player than the guy you have. So you really need to fire him and hire me. And uh, that worked more than you would imagine. Wow. And uh, so that's as, that's as, as much BS, I guess, as you could say. Otherwise, because you can't BS too much because you got you got to be able to deliver the goods and you got to be able to back up whatever it is you're saying. So I think, well, maybe, hey, can you play this? Yes, I can play that is, I guess, the, 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 the biggest amount of BS for, <laughs> for me. Oh, I, I guess I can relate to that because there's been many times they're like, hey, can you sing this? And I don't know what they're talking about. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can. <laughs> And I'll learn it the night before, you know, and perform it and go with it and then just do my own thing for it. Um, but BS, I think, honestly, the only BS I do and I still do right now is um, try to convince my children that because of their behavior, I'm going to die. That's, <laughs> that's the biggest BS. <laughs> but it might come true because they're killing me. <laughs> You know, for me, I'm like, I always want to be a manager in retail. And I'm like, oh, let's use a store. It doesn't exist anymore. And I put down, oh, manager. How hard can a manager be? Well, luckily, I was never in a spot where they had to say, we're going to hire you. But it's kind of like, if it sounds good and if it looks good, and why not say, push the envelope see if any doors open. Now, I'm not saying line's a good, a good thing or anything, but if it looks good on a resume, then instead of holding up a paper like, huh, okay, we come back. Oh, I see you on this resume, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we can have the conversation going instead of having a two-minute thing of, hi, bye. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. yeah. You fake, you know, fake it till you make it. <laughs> but a lot of it again is also belief in oneself if you yeah. believe you can do it you can do it you can um, you can manifest things that you would not believe you possible sometimes I, I, I can't think believe some of the stuff I've been able to do like wait a second how did that happen you know you, you gotta you, it's, it's a lot of focus it's a lot of belief in oneself is, is enormous and you have to. Yes, I agree. It's a lot of heart. Um, and, and you do have to believe in yourself and I, and everything that I'm doing now and what I've done in the past, I think has been the purpose, you know, ultimately it, it's not, I want to, if, if you're going to say, what's your legacy? Like I want everybody to at least feel like, yes, it is possible. You know, yes, I can do it and not let like what your show is about, you know, not let anything bring you or tear you down or tell you that you can't, you know, so. No, absolutely. Now we're going over the, the time limit, but I did promise so I'll pass it over. You guys can ask each other two questions. Hmm. I'll let you ask first. Okay. If you could have any job in your career right now, what would it be? What would it be? Oh, man, I, I, I'd probably have my own studio, like a recording studio and an acting, like actor studio, hmm. like that kind of business. Hmm. I do like okay. that. Like to be, be able to help and uh, make it easier for others, you know, to get to their dream. I think a lot of it is chances and opportunities. Um, and I would like to be able to like provide that for those who probably think they can never reach it. So, yeah. Good answer. <laughs> so, let's see, a question for you. Kind of the same thing. What do, you, what do you want your legacy to be? Once your time is up, what do you want to be remembered by? Oh, man. I, I, wow, I never thought about that. You know what? The, I think the only people that... I would want to care about my legacy would be my, would be my family, would be my wife and kids. Everybody else, not as meaning, not nearly as meaningful. Um, and of course, it, it, I don't care what people think of me as a musician. 
or of my career or the career choices that I've made. Was I a good husband? Was I a good dad? Was I a good friend? Was I an honest human being? Uh, you know, and uh, most of this, the decisions I make in my life are based on whether or not I'm going to be able to face myself in the mirror every morning. And that's, beautiful. that's it. That's beautiful. That's great. <laughs> you know, don't, Everybody can live that way. <laughs> yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And I said in my past episodes, if you can look at your own reflection in the mirror and smile, you're doing something right. It only comes to a time where you can't look at yourself in the mirror. You have to change something about yourself. Well, a wise man once said, and I'm a big fan of Dragon Ball. I love that. It doesn't matter if I'm 98 years old. I will always watch and listen to Dragon Ball. But a wise man once said, you know, my limitations can go to hell. <laughs> nice. That, that's I like exactly that. right. Exactly right. <laughs> I like but it. I do have a You're only limited by your imagination. No, you're absolutely right. I do have a couple questions for you guys off the air. But wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege having both of you as a guest. Your Instagrams will be on the bottom of the screen. And your bios will be on the bottom of the screen. So if you're watching on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe. Make sure to leave a comment so the three of us can interact with them. But with that being said, it was a real honor and privilege having these guys on the show. I will say thank you and stay tuned for part two. Thank you and have a good night. Bye.